Good morning once again. Welcome to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation this morning is going to be on Down or World Down Syndrome Day. It was celebrated on uh, Sunday the 21st and of course every year uh, that day is a day set aside to recognize and to celebrate uh, those of course uh, dealing with Down Syndrome and to let the world know more about it. This morning, we're joined by Rachel Inigbedion. She is a team lead, special initiative for growth. And uh, of course, she will be joining us to share more light on this and talk about Down syndrome here in Nigeria also. Good morning, uh, Rachel. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. It's a pleasure to have you and it's a pleasure for you to have me as well. Thank you Absolutely. so much. So let's let's get let's start with you know getting you know into the from the basics. What exactly is Down syndrome? And I know that there is a lot of um, meets. There's a lot of uh, you know misconceptions about it also here in Nigeria, maybe culturally, traditionally, and the like. So help explain what exactly it is and where we you know where you know these mis misconceptions really come from um, a lot. Thank you so much. I mean, it's a pleasure to be here this morning and to be able to speak about Down syndrome. So basically, Down syndrome is a condition. It's, it's a genetic condition in a person. Um, and that person has an extra chromosome. And the chromosomes are like these small packages of genes in our body. And they determine how a baby's body forms, probably during, pre during pregnancy can see and how the baby's body functions as it grows in the womb and after birth. So basically, typically a baby is born with 46 chromosomes, but babies with Down syndrome have like extra chromosome and that's what makes them unique because there's an extra copy of one of these chromosomes, which is known as chromosome 21. Now, a medical term for having an extra copy of um, chromosome is trisomy. And Down syndrome is also referred to as trisomy 21. Now, the extra copy changes how the baby body uh, and the brain develops, you know, and then that causes such a mental and physical challenge for that child. Now, even though people with Down syndrome may act and look similar, it's just, you know, different because it's different. They have different abilities as a person. And people with Down syndrome have this sort of eye is also known as a measure of intelligence and in, it's, it's quietly it's known as mildly to moderate so it has different ranges it could go from mild and then from mild it now goes down into the moderate and people with down syndrome are slower to speak than other children that's they have what you call speech impediment now I'm going to tell you some of the common features that you see in a child with down syndrome because I know that in in this part of the world people call them the big imbecile or you know this they say all sorts of names but these are common features that you see on a child with down syndrome a child with down syndrome will have a short neck and the tongue is you know likely to stick out of that child's mouth and a child with down syndrome has small hands and feet a child with down syndrome has a flattened face and especially at the bridge of the nose you'd notice the face and the child with Down syndrome also has shorter height, you know, as compared to other children. They're not so tall and their muscles are kind of um, poor in terms of the tone and then they have sort of loose joints. And they have a single line across the palm of their hands. It's called palmar grease. And apart from that, they have small pinky fingers. These fingers tend to like curve towards the thumb. So all of these are features around Down syndrome that people do not recognize or they, 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 tend, to, they tend to kind of confuse with other disability. Okay. Also, they're kind of... They're, okay. Um, yes, sorry. Rachel, I, I wanted you to emphasize on what you mentioned earlier about the IQ because really people do not know a lot. There's a knowledge gap, you know, about people with Down syndrome, all the conditions. I want you to uh, explain more when you say they have a higher IQ. Okay, so for the IQ, it's, it's, it's kind of like a cognitive of flexibility that has, that has not been proportionally developed because of the extra chromosome. So that's what causes the IQ, you know, makes it mild and then from mild to moderate. So what I mean is that they have 
issues around uh, memory, um, um, remembering things on time, you know, being able to, to, you know, get things done immediately and all that. So that's where um, th th that challenge is really born in. But over time, studies have shown that when you continue to develop their memory, they improve their cognitive flexibility because the cognitive flexibility is what helps us in terms of our neurological um, order, I mean the brain. So that's basically all about the IQ. It still has to do with the brain, the brain development like I had mentioned. So that extra chromosome is what causes that. Mm. All right. Okay. I, I, I want to, you know, speak now, of course, for, you know, Down syndrome here in Nigeria. You, you would notice uh, that a lot of parents who are rich enough um, and have the resources, most times when they have such uh, kids, take them abroad uh, because they have a better environment where special needs uh, kids, you know, can be taken care of. Um, so tell us about what, you know, kids with Down syndrome have to deal with here in Nigeria and how, you know, well are we doing with being able to create a special needs environment where these kids can still be educated and still, you know, uh, turn out great? Okay, thank you for that question. So basically in Nigeria, like you've mentioned, when people have the money and the resources, the first thing they do is look for the right medical intervention, the right educational intervention, and the right social intervention for the child that has Down syndrome. But you know, all eight fingers are not equal, that's the truth. And so for people who are under-resourced or disadvantaged, what we do as an organization is find a way to rehabilitate them by providing them the right learning um, alternatives in terms of education, in terms of health, in terms of career opportunities. Another organization that does this very more in Nigeria is the Down Syndrome Foundation Nigeria, which is likely to be the first foundation in Nigeria to advocate and provide empowerment tools for persons with Down syndrome only. So we work together with them and we provide for them the right learning opportunities providing them even assistive technology in terms of helping them in education, providing them health approaches. Because the truth is, if you develop their IQ and you give them the right health opportunities, when you combine all of these approaches together, they can be the best version of themselves. And we do all of this with the kind of programs that we provide for them, projects, because we intend to improve not just their emotional intelligence, but also the, their cognitive flexibility, like I've mentioned, because if they can remember things, because it's an intellectual disability, if they remember things on time, and they're able to do things in a methodological manner, trust me, a lot of employers will be able to integrate them into the workforce, okay. and then there will be less stigma, stigmatization you know, for them in the community. So that's basically what we do. I understand that a, a lot of people go through challenges in terms of the financial parts because taking care of a child with a special needs is quite expensive. Yes, it's, it's a tough, you know, tough knot. But the truth is that there's so many other ways that, you know, one can foster better. And that is joining community groups like people like us because when you join community groups like us, focus groups like us, they are able to get the right opportunity in terms of education, in terms of health, in terms of career. Because having a, a child with Down syndrome, parents begin to think, okay, after taking care of the child, giving the child the right medical intervention and, and education and all of that, what next? Would the okay. child continue to depend on me for the rest of my life? All right, Rachel. When um, I grow old, will the child you know, still be available to be able to take care of him or herself? Okay. So that's where we provide that right independent channels for them. All right, Rachel, we know that in this part of the world where you know, we're, we're very religious, some people will attribute this to a spiritual attack you know, and things like that. What are some of the other myths surrounding Down syndrome in Nigeria? Okay, so basically, you've mentioned it all. Um, for example, the religious part, and then shame. I've seen a parent who opened up to us and said that she was ashamed of her daughter because any time she had to go out, people would ask her, "Why is your child different? Why does the child nose or eyes look like that?" These are the kind of questions that people raise and then uh, she's taken aback and when she gets home, she starts to cry and she feels depressed. So these are the kind of challenges that parents pass through. And then carers, people who care for them. 
There's a myth around it that, oh, this person that's caring for a child with Down syndrome, uh, this person doesn't have a child, maybe the person is trying to look for blessings. There's so many myths around it. But the truth is this, how we dispel those myths is what matters. How we are able to tell people that they have the right capacity and competence if we build it up is what matters. And I think for me, that's the only way to dispel those myths in Nigeria. That's why today we are celebrating World Down Syndrome all over the world because we want people to see the brighter side of them and what they can actually bring to the table. How you know how important it is to have a, a sort of inclusive environment where they can thrive and do better in, in terms of education, in terms of their career. So that's the basic. All right. Uh, lastly, if you can do this in 30 seconds, uh, what would you advise uh, parents who, uh, of course, uh, gave just, you know, had a child, you know, and it's very likely to have uh, Down syndrome? Uh, what would your advice be in Nigeria? You know, where can, who can they reach out to? Where can they go? Um, you know, what immediate help can they uh, seek? Okay, thank you. Uh, for me, I feel like this is really crucial because people, when people have a child with Down syndrome, the first thing that comes to their mind is a spiritual attack. You know, they forget that there are so many things that one can be that can be done. For example, giving the, the child the right medical intervention because things like Down syndrome can even attribute a child to have, you know, like a hole in the heart. You know, that alone can even make the child's lifespan cut short. People forget all of that. So the first thing a parent should do or the when a mother is pregnant is go for a scan. Screen yourself to see that you do not have an abnormal result. Because, you know, people that have Down syndrome along the line, many of them would tell you that when they went for their scan, the first thing that they noticed was an abnormality in the test result. So I think it's really critical for you to go for checkups, just try to see that that child is, you know, normal. And when the child is born with Down syndrome, the first thing you need to do is not panic. Do not panic because people panic and then they make a lot of mistakes. And they begin to call their Afa or they call their pastors. We know these things are relevant. Fine, because when an African world with religious, you know, you know, emphasis and all of that. But the truth is that instead of you need to do all of that, the first thing you need to do is research. Look through what have people done in the past that have Down syndrome kids. What have they done best? What are the best practices that they have done? You know, meet up with them. Meet up with people like us who are community um, uh, providers of, of resources for persons with Down syndrome and find a way to help, you, help us help you to be able to help yourself. Because the truth is, it comes with depression. It comes with a lot of mental you know, work, you know, having a child with special needs. So that is really important. And then finally, um, associating yourself with organizations like the Down Syndrome Foundation Nigeria is really critical because they have the right medical, social, and edu educational intervention to take care of your child because they have the right people, the right resources to so to broom that child and bring the child best you know, up to par so that that child can become independent and self-reliant. All so right, yes. Rachel. All right. Thank you. Advice. Thank you very much, Rachel. We really have learned a lot today about this condition. And I encourage everyone to, to research about this and, you know, get rid of all the stereotypes you may have about, you know, the condition, uh, Down syndrome, and show some love to everyone. And, uh, yes, let's Absolutely. make the world a better place. Have make a great day, world. Rachel. Thank you. Yes. Make Thank it you. A Bye. Place. All right, thanks for talking to us. All right, stay, stay with us. Uh, we are talking uh, continuous voter registration next. Mm -hmm. uh, how far has INEC come? You would see, uh, it seems like uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission has missed out on its deadline to uh, start and kickstart with uh, CVR exercise this uh, first quarter of 2021. There's also talks that it should resume in the second quarter of 2021. So uh, we're getting that conversation running next here on The Breakfast. Don't worry.